What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video, and today we're taking a look at another movie review. And today we're taking a look at a Seth Rogen movie, because he's been working on a lot lately. However, this is one of his older works, all the way back from 2014. It is a 1 hour and 52 minute movie, and it also stars the likes of Eminem and a lot of songs from Katy Perry. Well, not a lot of songs from Katy Perry, just the main use of firework. And if you couldn't guess already, the movie is the interview and you can watch this on youtube uh, or google play but you have to pay for it there however you can watch it for free over on netflix however without any further delay let's get into what google has to say about this movie which i'm not really too sure how to feel about so the interview it has a 6.5 out of 10 imdb a 51 percent on rotten tomatoes and a 52 percent on metric but Aaron and Dave, who run a popular late-night talk show, get a chance to interview Kim Jong-un. The CIA decide to take advantage of the opportunity and devise the plan to assassinate the infamous dictator. So, that is basically the start of the movie. Um, and there's a lot of uh, talk about honeypotting, which is basically trying to, like, be sexy and get them to do things for you because you're, like, showing a little bit of a... a little bit of a s interest... And they end up going to, like, North Korea, and their plan is to basically stick this poison strip on them and shake his hand, and it'll slowly kill him. However, you know, Skylar decides to put it in some gum, and one of the generals eats it, and he lives for, like, the next three days. They're very shocked every time they see him, but they have to get another one, so Seth Rogen has to fight a tiger to get one, and... Like, meanwhile, whilst he's doing that, Skylar is going on an all-out, like, day trip with Kim, and he's basically being shown around, he's having a good time to play basketball, they drink margaritas, they listen to Katy Perry, they drive a tank, they do all this, that, and the other, which kind of sways Skylar, so he throws in the spare, like, poison strip into the water. However, Seth Rogen kept a second one hidden from him, just in case he fucked up again, and he puts it on his hand and goes to shake hands with Kim. However... Uh, Skylar doesn't let him, and Skylar and Kim go to a meal, and then they, obviously, Skylar realizes that Kim's lying, and he's been faking all this, honeypotting him to, you know, get him on his side. We then have, like, Seth Rogen have, uh, a, a good old time with, um, the secretary, uh, like, Kim Jong-un's, like, secretary, and they all three devise a plan to basically get Kim out of power, and they succeed. They basically make, fuck him over in the interview and f blow him up with his own tank and that's pretty much where the movie ends with them stopping like a global like nuke attack from North Korea uh, I'm gonna be honest this film is incredibly incredibly racist and I do believe obviously 2014 was a different time and that is where they try and get most of the comedy and watching this movie back in nowadays, it's really not that funny. Most of the jokes don't land. Most of the jokes are quite petty, quite basic. And there's a lot of, like, jokes about, like, gay and, like, hom like you know, just homophobic jokes. And I'm going to be honest, they might have been funny back in 2014, but looking back at it now, just... Looking at it with more mature eyes, it isn't that funny. The comedy really falls flat because it is very heavily dependent on those two things. And they keep bringing up honeypotting, which isn't even that funny. But they keep bringing it up as like, oh, everyone's trying to honeypot you. And, oh, I've been honeypotted. Oh, I honeypotted. Oh, I was trying to honeypot. Oh, I, I, I vaguely forgot what the word honeypot meant like for like the first part of this movie. Because they kept bringing it up and it's like, what the fuck is that? And then they like explained it when they met the CIA. The acting is quite shit as well. Um, the acting isn't that good. The only good bit from this film, again, was a bit that I saw on TikTok, was when they're on the basketball court and it's like, they hate us because they ain't us. And that is a quote that I have referenced multiple times just from seeing that tiktok before watching this movie and you guys know i hate like saying i saw this movie on tiktok and i reference it from tiktok and that's the reason why i watched it but it is and i'm gonna be honest tiktok hyped this movie up way more than it's worth 
I really did not enjoy this movie. I don't know how to feel on it because the story was quite weak. I thought it was quite interesting to take a look into, like, you know, back into 2014 and, like, Seth Rogen's early film making career because this is around the time he made, like, Bad Neighbors, Bad Neighbors 2, and all of those kinds of movies. So it's very interesting to see, but it just isn't it, and it wasn't a movie for me. I didn't laugh during this movie. I was quite, like, confused, and I was just sort of sat watching it. I was, I was kind of playing on my phone, making thumbnails and editing videos whilst watching it, so it wasn't one that kept my attention, and was kind of one that was just kind of background noise for me. It does have a pretty big A-list cast of characters, which, you know, it's like some good actresses and actors in here. They're like all really cool. But, um, I don't know, this movie just isn't it. I, I, I can like name all these characters from so many different places. Like we have the Green Goblin from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Well, Harry Osborn, he takes the mantle of Green Goblin in like the last movie. But still, he is like a version of the Green Goblin, and one of my favorite versions of the Green Goblin, might I add. And he just, he does that role so much better than what he does this one. And he has been in a lot of comedy movies, so I do feel that's more of the role that he fits. But, I don't know, I just don't think he did that much of a good job in this one. Seth Rogen didn't do his iconic laugh in this movie. And I'm going to be honest, I thought it was missing that. His laugh is so iconic and so good. Like, I, it, it, it should be like a staple of all the movies that he's in. They even made room for it in The Lion King, but they didn't have it in this movie. I was watching and I was waiting. It's even in Invincible. It's just not in here. It's even in Mario movie, but it's not in here. And it's like, this is a comedy movie. Like, you know, use your iconic laugh. Make, you know, because I, I always find his laugh funny. If he laughed, like his actual laugh, I would have laughed at this movie. The entire sort of plot points of this movie literally depended on honey potting, and I felt like it took too much of like focus on honey potting and trying to like have all these twists and turns and backstabs that were very much seen like miles away. I thought it would have made for a little bit of a better film if Kim was actually a nice guy. But then again, going back to like 2014, he, he wasn't that much of a nice guy. So I don't think they would have been able to get away with that. Like making a movie about how him be actually being a secret nice guy. But I do believe that story would have been a little bit more interesting. And a little bit more kind of... I don't know, just... I would have enjoyed it a little bit more if it did turn out that he was a good guy. Because... The whole plot to killing him and sort of having the two main characters argue with each other would have been really interesting to see like him come around to liking Kim as well. But obviously, obviously, went down the road of Kim still being an evil person, still being a bad guy, which isn't really that exciting. It was kind of obvious and was what we all expected from the get-go, especially watching this movie. I really don't have a lot else to say about this movie. The visual effects are pretty cool with all the explosions, and even the slow-mo at the end when Kim was getting blown up was quite interesting. I don't know, I think they did a really good job at it. It looked quite realistic, and again, I don't know how Marvel movies and DC movies and just movies in general have slipped so low that CGI looks worse now than it did back in 2014. We should be making improvements, not, like, uh, devolving, like, going backwards. It's just like some minor nitpicks that I have but again um this movie did come out in 2014 so it was a different time and it was a different age of comedy but other than that I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video I'll see you all next one hope you have an excellent day and this movie is a 3 out of 10 in my opinion I do agree with Rotten Tomatoes and IMDB that it is a shit movie However, if you do want more movie reviews and more videos from me, you can stay like on the YouTube channel. Because 98% of you are recurring viewers, but you're not subscribed. What's that about? Are you scared of the big red button? Is it spooky? Is it scary? It's red, it's bold, it's bright. If you don't like that and you want to push it just to make it a little bit more mellow, a little bit less threatening, you can push it. It'll make it grey. It probably won't expl explode, hopefully. Don't take my word on that. But, um... If you also want me on other platforms, if you want a little bit more Tyler Price in your life, if you want to check me out over on TikTok, Instagram, Cameo, Reddit, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitch, 
everything like that, everything else that I have to offer as a content creator is linked in the description in my link tree. And that's it from me. So um, go enjoy the rest of your days. And I'm not your mother. I'm not your father, your parent, your guardian, your sister, brother, dog, cat, hamster, gerbil, snake. I'm none of those things. I'm not responsible for you. And you are your own person. You can make your own decisions. But I'm going to advise you that you don't waste your two hours of your time watching this movie. Because uh, cause it ain't that good. I'm going to be honest. But if you do watch it and you do decide you don't like it, don't say I didn't warn you. And bye-bye. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting through the wind wanting to start again? Do you ever feel, feel so paper thin like a house of cards won't blow from caving in?